In this project, we're going to simulate and analyze the heat transfer process on a rough surface having a small serrated flanges. The geometry of this project is designed in ANSYS Design Modeler and then meshed inside ANSYS Meshing Software. The mesh type used for this geometry is structured and the total number of elements is about 100,000. At the first step, we need to import a mesh file to the Fluent software. So from File tab, read, select mesh. And in the opening window, uh, just select mesh file and then click OK. OK, after reading a mesh file, we can go to the settings. In general tab for solver type, Check the pressure base type, because uh, you know a fluid is water liquid and it's an incompressible fluid, and that's why we use pressure based type. And also, we want a, a steady state simulation, so in time section, uh, just check the steady. And uh, we also want to consider the gravitational acceleration and effects on our fluid, so just put the 9.81. Uh, in the negative direction of y. After that, go to model tab, click on energy, and check the energy equation. So the solver will uh, solve the energy equation as well. And then go to viscose. Uh, as you know, our inlet uh, velocity is very low, so we expect a laminar regime, and that's why we left the viscose model to be laminar. Now I need to define the material. So uh, in material tab, fluid part, I have defined the water liquid earlier. But to add this, just right click on fluid and new. In the opening window, I can put the values manually, but uh, water liquid is available in Fluent database. So click on Fluent database. Scroll down to find the water liquid and copy that. And after create it, you can see the uh, material here. And you just need to apply it on your fluid domain. So go to cell zone condition and your surface body. The list of your defined uh, materials is here. So just uh, apply water liquid and done. At the last part of the setup process, we need to define our boundary conditions. So in boundary conditions, uh, I change the view type to zoom type. Uh, we have inlet, internal domain, outlet, and walls. Uh, inlet type is velocity inlet, and if I click on edit, in momentum tab, uh, just put the Velocity magnitude and in thermal tab, uh, the temperature of inlet uh, fluid is defined, which is equal to 300. At the outlet, uh, which has the type of pressure outlet, uh, in the momentum tab, just uh, lift the gauge pressure to zero and uh, the temperature is 300. On our uh, down wall, if I click on it, we've got a, a stationary wall and no slip condition is defined. But in thermal tab, uh, the heat flux of a thousand watt per square meter is defined. So apply it, and we've done in setup process. In solution part, uh, in methods tab, we use simple scheme for our simulation. As you know, we have uh, many, many uh, algorithms to solve navier stokes and energy equations. But uh, here, for simplicity, we use simple scheme. And for pressure, momentum, and energy equations, uh, we use second order upwind to discretize. Uh, we know. Uh, it has some pros and cons, but uh, the advantage is 
its accuracy. In controls part, uh, we left it to the default uh, values of software. In solution part, in methods tab, uh, check the simple scheme for our simulation. Uh, as you know, we've got many, many uh, algorithms to solve Navier-Stokes and energy equation, but uh, here for simplicity, uh, we prefer simple scheme. And also for discretization part, uh, check the second order of them for all of them. In controls part, uh, we left them uh, to be equal to software defaults. In next part, in report definitions, uh, we need to define a parameter to control our simulation. So uh, after opening the report definition box, uh, click on new, surface, and check the area weighted average. Select a name for it, and uh, we want to uh, control our temperature in the outlet. So uh, in field variable, uh, check temperature, and in surfaces part, uh, select outlet. And then report file, report plot, and print to console. And also we can create output parameter of it. Next in monitors withdraw, uh, we can put some values here for software. So uh, in calculation, in each iteration, when the errors uh, reaches the uh, values that we've put here, the calculation will interrupt and stop. But uh, we don't want them. So uncheck all of the boxes here and Instead of that, uh, in the previous part, we've defined uh, a definition for it, and that was the temperature of the outlet. If the temperature reaches a constant value, uh, we can say uh, that our simulation and calculation has converged. As the last step uh, in solution part, Go to initialization part and select a standard initialization and compute from inlet. So uh, we define a, a starting guess for simulation and then in run calculation uh, enter 700 and uh, click on calculate so the simulation will start. As our last step, we should go to initialization part and uh, a standard initialization and compute from inlet. So uh, we put some uh, values as an initial guess for our solver. Click initialize, wait a minute, and then go to run calculations and put some uh, value, for example, uh, 700 and click calculate so the solver start our simulation now after 700 iterations we can see the residual plot it shows us a good convergence but we can continue more uh, and also check the after temperature that we've defined earlier in report definitions tab uh, it shows us a good convergence as well, but it would be better to continue a little more to reach uh, uh, more accurate values. So now uh, we want to define a plot and see the effects of uh, fringes on uh, the heat transfer. So go to plots tab, open xy plot, uh, name it temp. Uh, and in y-axis function, uh, we need temperature, and on surfaces, uh, we select wall. Obviously, you can see in the plot that we have a sharp increasing in the vicinity of fringes, and that's the influence of it. The 
fluid regime turns to turbulent as time goes by and uh, we've got a better heat transfer in comparison with uh, surface without fringes. To make better contours and uh, have a better view on the uh, results, uh, we can have them and make uh, contours influent, but uh, CFD pores can get us better information and better uh, pictures with more and more qualities. So uh, open CFD post, we need to import results. So file load results, uh, open simulation uh, folder, and uh, DPO, FFF, Fluent, and import that file. To make a contour from uh, upper toolbar, select contour and name it, for example, temp again. And uh, on the locations tab, select symmetry 2 and your favorite variable, which is temperature here. If I normalize on the surface, I can have a better look. The temperature enters with 300 Kelvin and uh, getting warmer and to check the vortices and wakes of uh, fluid let's hide temperature and make a vector again on the upper uh, toolbar select vector and uh, name it for example vector 1 locations on the symmetry 2 and click apply if I zoom on it uh, you can see the wakes here after each fringes, which turns the fluid to turbulent flow and improve the uh, heat transfer. As previously discussed, fringes roll in the velocity vector and streamless contour shows that vortices are generated after the fluid flow has passed over the fringes. In other words, the fluid flow becomes turbulent after the fringes, causing the generation of vortices and, as we all know, the heat transfer coefficient is more than that of the laminar flow. To have a review on our simulation, uh, we remember that uh, at the viscose model part, we chose laminar regime for our simulation and then turn the energy equation on and then in boundary conditions uh, for the inlet we chose velocity inlet type and then entered uh, the velocity magnitude and the temperature of uh, flow uh, was constant and equal to 300 Kelvin at the outlet uh, the type was pressure outlet with the gauge pressure of zero and for the down wall uh, we've had a heat flux equal to a thousand watt per square meters. After that, in solution methods, we've chose simple algorithm for a solver to solve our uh, equations and uh, for discre discretization of our pressure moment to an energy, uh, we selected second order uplink. At the last step, in initialization part, we've chose a standard type and uh, computed from inlet and then started calculation. We hope that you find this tutorial useful. To benefit from MRCFT services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mr-cfd.com or www.mr-cfd.com